whoever's watching out there, our successful singers and our songbirds from the group and online, um, where you might be seeing bits and pieces of this, maybe on uh, Instagram and the Facebook group on YouTube. Yeah, I have Marcy Meredith with me today. <laughs> And Marcy, I'm not going to tell your story. I'm going to let you tell your story. So um, you are a speech pathologist. I'm just going to yeah. say that. Okay. Um, so tell me a little bit about that. How okay. you got started and singing and that kind of thing. Yeah, I, okay. So I was a professional singer first. So for 15 years of my career, I was professional singer at the operatic level. Um, I was a member of the Atlanta Opera for 15 years, over 250 productions with them. And of course, any various regional musical theater. And um, I also ran and developed an artist program at um, a local venue here in Atlanta. Um, so since then, and, and of course, early on, I developed a voice and piano studio. So that's been going for 20 years. I have no idea anymore. So, um, so I've got quite a bit of experience as a professional singer, as a professional artist, and being on stage, being a stage performer. I do a lot of live performance. Um, so when 2008 hit, which was when a lot of artists had to kind of rethink their game plan, um, that was when the real estate market crashed and it was a tough time economically for artists everywhere. So at that time I decided, okay, I need to figure out how to take my love for the voice and turn it into something that maybe will help sustain and, and be stable. So I went back to school at the University of, of South Florida in Tampa and got my master's degree in the communication sciences and disorders. And at the time I remember questioning my decisions. At the time I remember thinking, you know, I don't want to sell out. I don't want to give up, I, you know, but, um, I'll tell you in, in all honesty, it has been one of the best decisions I made. It's been a beautiful companion career and they have worked together so well in both, you know, being able to be a good speech therapist, having that background as a singer and being a speech therapist who is a singer and continues to teach and continues to perform when she can. And so it's, it's been a beautiful companion for me um, as, as a choice. So that's how I got there. Amazing. Yeah. And we met back in those days when you we were did. getting we your did. degree. And I was just getting my degree. And, um, and I think our, our mutual friend, Bruce Meadows was like, Hey, Corinne, I have a friend that's going down to uh, Florida <laughs> and getting her degree there at USF. That's right. That's right. And that's, we did. I remember we had a lunch and that was all she wrote. We were friends yeah. after that. <laughs> that awesome. I miss you being down here. <laughs> I know I need to come down for a visit, but we'll all wait until things are cleared up a little bit more. Yeah, let the dust settle, you know. That's right, that's right. So, um, yeah, and and I remember I was like, I'm going to get my speech pathology degree too. And I started to explore it, but I was constantly performing. And I was like, You were. I was where you, we both would, we'd have those conversations like, Should we? Should I don't want to. Do I? I ended up not doing it. Yeah. Um, and I actually explored, there were a couple of uh, grad schools that I explored, including USF. Yeah. And I just thought, I just, my, my brain went to, I don't want to be in a cohort. Yeah. I don't want to be in, in school for another two to three years. I, don't I wanna, understand. Yeah. I don't want to have to spend my money. <laughs> it's not easy to go back to school when you're, you know, 30 something. It's, it's just, it's not easy to go back. And as a, as an adult, who's kind of been out in the world to go back into that environment. However, and that was tough. I'll be honest with you. That was a tough thing to deal with. Yeah. Um, but at the, at the same time, you know, I think in the end, it worked out really well um, for me anyway, just because my journey was to come back to Atlanta area and, um, and kind of get back into my environment here. But the, after 2008, the landscape changed quite a bit. The work was less, um, it wasn't as stable. Um, the, the pay had gone down because of that people, you know, in that economic climate, just, they weren't supporting the arts the same way. And so I knew coming back to my hometown that it was going to be a little bit harder to sustain my life on a performer's salary at that point. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, but I never gave up. I never gave up both. Um, I, I never gave up one for the other is what I mean to say. So, it was more of a addition. So I always say when people say, well, you're a singer and, and I'm like, yeah, I added a career. <laughs> I didn't give up one to get the other. I just added one, I added a companion. 
Yeah, I really do. And I have great stories about that. I remember um, being at my first clinical, I guess my first, I was at a rehab facility uh, down in Florida. It was my very first time like being out in the clinical world. And we were treating a woman who had had a pretty significant stroke and no one could understand her. She kept, she would try to talk to people. She would grab them. She would, you know, try to get them to understand her. And she was just so emphatic and just couldn't be understood. And I remember watching a nurse kind of just look at her and, you know, pat her shoulder and say, it's okay. <laughs> you know, she didn't know what she was. It was like, you know, like trying to talk to a two-year-old sometimes, you know, you're trying to understand and you just go, okay, I smile and nod. And I watched this woman in that moment just kind of collapse. And I just thought, oh my gosh, I have to help her. Like she's losing her spirit here. And so I started listening more intently and I started going, is that Spanish? And they were like, no, no, we've had Spanish people come in and ask her questions. It's not Spanish. And I kept listening. And one day I went, oh my gosh, it's Italian. This woman is speaking Italian. And so I pulled out all of my 24 Italian songs and arias and I brought them in and I pulled out my Italian dictionary. I'm not kidding. And I brought it in and I tried, I started singing to her in Italian and her face lit up. You've never seen anything like it. And if it hadn't been for that little old opera singer who thought, should I, that woman could have just kind of let her soul die and perish right there. But within three weeks of me discovering that she spoke Italian, she went home went home to her son who, guess what, also spoke Italian. <laughs> so I told her, now what the story ended up being was that she was a native Italian who learned Spanish and then learned English. And when you have a stroke, you lose your extras. Yeah. You can lose your extra languages. So that little old opera singer that thought, what am I doing here? Actually knew in that moment, that's, that's why I'm here. That experience, that 15 years of singing Italian came in handy for this one woman who just needed to be understood and just needed to be heard. So it's been, like I said, a beautiful companion. And, um, you know, one of my favorite singing students actually um, had, uh, she was suffering with Tourette's. Mm -hmm. And um, as she went through her, her journey, singing was a beautiful tool for helping her become more fluent and more smooth in her experience and speech and, you know, trying to work through some of her journey. So it, it, it's happened on both sides, right? My singing has come in handy on the speech side in the clinical realm and my speech experience has come in handy on the singing side. So, Amazing. Um, so yeah, it's been a, it's been a wonderful companion.